Why are you so far from me? In my arms is where you are to be. How long will you make me wait? I don't know how much more I can take. Welcome to another Songs by my Soba. So today's topic is going to be wine in Moldova. So a very big event in Moldovan culture, especially if you live in the villages, is picking grapes during the fall. Many Moldovan families have land, they own land. For example, my host family lives in the center of the village and there's about a 15 minute drive up to like the hills in the village and then that's where you find all of their vineyards, I guess you would call it, where all of their grape plants are. And so each family typically has land, at least through my experience here in the village. In the fall you go, early fall, September, October, you go and pick the grapes. They bring them back home and either they, many families sell them or just eat the grapes and others, or majority I would say, make their own wine. So here at my host family's home, there is kind of like this wooden contraption that's like around like short like barrel, I would say, that has like a press in it where my host dad will press the grapes and then they leave them to ferment. I haven't been present throughout the whole process. That's somewhat embarrassing because that's a huge deal for their culture. Um, but I have seen them mixing it and leaving it to ferment. I know that a lot of other volunteers have been more active in the, in the wine making process. Um, and then they will put it in these like large barrels that they will leave in their basements uh, throughout the winter. And so whenever they have a guest come over, uh, you are basically considered cheap if you do not give some wine. I'm doing this because they typically pour the wine into a pic pitcher. And then what happens is you'll have, you know, a little masa or a, as they call it in Moldova, or a lunch or a dinner with tons of food on the, on the table. And then the owner of the house will typically pour the glass and then that glass will go to the guest. They will give a little toast and then they will go around the table and each guest typically will have the wine from the same glass. But there are cases where, especially during special occasions, each person will have their own glass, maybe one for cognac, one for champagne, one for wine. It depends on the family and the occasion. And something else that is very interesting is that uh, when they're toasting, they're toasting to their health or to the health of, you know, somebody else if it's their birthday, for example, or they may be toasting in honor of somebody who has passed in their memory. Uh, so my host said will always say like health and peace whenever he gives a toast and a lot of people laugh at him because he's just this character and he just loves to have a reason to drink. It's one of his favorite, favorite things. And... So yes, when you go to somebody's house in the village, you are expected to drink their house wine as, uh, as showing a sign of respect for them and because they are letting you in and they are so thankful that you are there that they really want you to try it. So that can be overwhelming at times because they want you to keep on, keep on drinking. So you have to also be like, oh no, like, I, I can't right now, I'm taking medication. Or one of my friends says it's because of, of his religious background, which it actually is not, but if that is the case, you could also use that as well. But their Peace Corps actually trains us on excuses to give if we feel like we do no longer want to drink. And there are others who just want to. So it's, you know, it's depends on you and your personal preference, right? And... Something else that I wanted to add is they also make something they call like rakio 
or Tsuika or Samagon, they might have s small differences that I don't actually know right now, but it's also a type of like a moonshine that they make at their homes. And I remember having a small glass, you know, just a shot of uh, Tsuika at my, my partner's house, my, my Moldovan teaching partner's house. And I, for some reason, thought it would be okay to take all of it. And immediately I was just like, dizzy and I'm not I'm one to exaggerate but I'm not exaggerating when I say this like I was just like dizzy and I was like oh I was like I'm so sorry I'm feeling very like you know all over the place so she's just like oh we'll pass just keep eating and of course they had a good laugh seeing me you know intoxicated so that was interesting, but it's all a part of the, the cultural experience and just knowing as a volunteer, you end up knowing like your limits and your boundaries and around the, the drinking. And, but of course they have a lot of uh, pride in the alcohol. I mean, in the States, you know, people love to drink, but imagine if people in the States made their own alcohol, there's even more pride and uh, something even more beautiful about alcohol when you make it yourself or anything that you make yourself. In the States, I think I've known people who produce their own beer. And I know there are people, of course, that make their own wine, but I personally have never known anybody. So it is interesting to learn a little bit more about the process. With that said, there are also many beautiful vineyards around Moldova. There's Castel Mimi, Krikova, um, Olesti Mij. There's many different uh, wineries. And if you are a tur tourist and you're planning to visit Moldova, I would highly su suggest going to all the wineries. There's not, if you're taking a trip, you could even probably hit all of them if you wanted to. And typically you take a tour, you get your tasting and you get a little bit of the history, uh, which is nice. And it's a way for the Moldovan economy to, to be boosted and for people to, to have jobs. So that's something that's, that's great. And with that said, there's also... Um, because in the villages there are of course not many jobs and if there are jobs you know you get paid very little and if you work you also are then expected to go home and you know either take care of your kids make food and tend to your garden Moldovans have huge gardens I've said this over and over again you know take care of your animals there's a lot of work to be done so if you have two or more barrels of wine it's going to be very common for you in your downtime to be drinking especially as a man women drink just as much i i would say in moldova but it definitely is more acceptable for example for men to be in large groups and drinking beer or wine you won't see women do that unless it's in their homes at the stores throughout the village there'll be little tables in the front there you'll see typically men group sometimes you'll see women here and there but it's typically men not as acceptable for a woman Again, in the villages, not as sure how it, in the city, it's much more open. Uh, with that said, that causes there to be, you know, of course, an issue with over drinking and potentially alcoholism. And you'll, you know, you'll see people that are drinking out in front of these stores, maybe eight, nine, ten in the morning, um, you know, not just a little bit, but a lot of alcohol and I'm not passing judgment I'm just trying to paint a picture of how this is such a beautiful thing in their culture but like every part of our culture something positive can also maybe lead to something negative or something that's not as productive for the society as a whole uh, so yeah you'll often hear stories a lot of my experiences and my stories and observations are through my host mom and what she tells me as well so what she says is she'll often talk about a family where there's, you know, a husband who's always drunk and they laugh about it. And it's funny. Um, there's also a woman in the village who's typically drunk. She's come over to our house while she's drunk and they try to like sober her up and help. So I have encountered and heard of situations where, you know, uh, because of maybe you don't have a job and you're home all day and that's all you have, then of course, anybody would become dependent on, on it. And, you know, alcoholism exists in the United States. It exists everywhere. And something else that's for another time and for another video is that with alcohol and, uh, you know, consuming a lot of it, there is also a lot of issues with domestic violence in the homes here. And that, also, that often to them uh, is seen as going hand in hand, which I would like to talk about that another time in a video that's more focused on domestic violence because you could talk about that for so many days. 
And so, yes, so I think that's all I wanted to say about winemaking in Moldova. Oh, one more thing. I did go pick the grapes last, my first fall here, I went and picked the grapes. It was absolutely beautiful, but the vines are like so thick. And so they bring scissors, but I was seeing my host mom just rip it off with her hands. So I'm like, you know, I'm not going to use scissors because I don't want to be looked at as a weak American. So I use my bare hands ripping off the vines and of course I bled. But because the grapes were purple, you couldn't tell that I was bleeding. So I was like, I didn't say anything to anyone. I just like left it as it is. I think I told them later. But goes to show it's not easy work at all. It's very, very difficult, you know, having all that land, bringing all those grapes back. And I, I ended up bleeding. So that's that. So if you ever do get to come to Moldova, try their wine. Uh, they would, they'll, they'll love that. It's their pride and joy. And also there is a Moldovan restaurant. I believe it's in Watertown in Massachusetts. I'm from Boston. So I went to this restaurant before I came to Moldova and I believe they also import Moldovan wine. So if you're in the States and you'd like to try that, then that is a place where you could get it. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you next week. Have a great day.